So the episode opens up with Agatha going by Agnes, and she's a detective. It's giving us Disney Order SVU. So the case that she's working on is of a dead girl. Looks like she got crushed by something in the middle of the forest. So I have to say, I have really loved this Zoya Allegra. I am going to put this down as one of my Zoya favorites. It is bold, it's rich, it's deep, and with the Zoya top coat, it gives a fabulous shine. Maybe I'll put it with some gold, give it a Kwanzaa tea. And she could tell that the dead girl was a witch, but she can't remember, but she looks at the burnt fingers and she's like, that that's reminiscent of something. So she walks around the forest looking for more clues and she finds a cameo in a puddle, but she don't tell the other officers about it. So the only thing that this body had on it other than clothes was a library card. So she goes to the library and it's a book called, I don't know, something, but the initials of it spell out Dark Hold. So she goes to see it and it's like a bit. So she goes over to where the book was because they said they have some more copies and there's been a fire in the library and you could tell that whole shelf was burned a hole in. So it's not there anymore. She gets back to the office and this FBI agent comes in and this is Aubrey Plaza and she's very flirty almost squirty. So Aubrey's trying to help her with the case, but you could tell Aubrey a witch. And Agatha's like, some familiar about you, but there's something I don't like about you. I have to say, Aubrey Plaza is Aubrey plaza really hard to the point where it's almost like, okay, girl, well, you're, you're you. We get it. We get it. So she takes that cameo buy a pawn shop to get some information on it and it's early 17th century and it's a locket with some hair in it. So that night, Aubrey Plaza stops by Agnes's trying to jar that half a memory. But before she can jar too far, we hear a noise upstairs and this heifer getting robbed. So she chased the guy down, he ended up getting hit by a car and she sees it's a kid and brings him to the jail to lock him up. And he started talking about the road. Then she starts showing him pictures of that dead body. And he's like, these are pictures of a garden. And then all of a sudden everything gets weird and the universe starts changing and he starts chanting. And so he's lifted Wanda's spell. So they have to get to membrane. So then Agatha goes to the coroner and who's there waiting for her but that body. Well, one minute the body's there, the next minute the body's not. And then Aubrey shows up. And she's like, don't you remember? Don't you remember? And then she starts getting hot and she's like, yes, tear yourself open. And so she starts taking off her clothes and then we start to see her become the old Agatha's and then the black and white Agatha. And then finally she's like, oh, it's me again. So she goes home and wakes up the next morning and then runs out the house booty butt naked asking how the hell long have I been living here? And her neighbor's like, three years, but cover your puss. So she goes back in the house and discovers all her magic is gone. But then she realizes, oh snap, this kid is in my closet so I didn't actually take him to the popo. So that means Aubrey Praza pops in and starts throwing her around the room. And she's like, I'm gonna get you. But then she's like, wait, hold on, hold on. You don't want me powerless. That's not a challenge, it's beneath you. Let me walk the road and get my powers back and then come and find me, Heffa. And she's like, all right, but the Salem 7 gonna be here at sundown to sick on your ass. So I'll see you soon, sis. Not scissoring in a circle this time. So the heifer's off to find her road. So well, I'ma see you soon for the next one. So we open with that guy that was in the closet kind of hopping out to see what Agatha doing. And she's getting dressed. She said, you can stay here, I'ma... I'm a head on before the vengeance seekers get. He said, take me with you to the witch's road. I was the one that broke the spell of the Scarlet Witch. And she said, then why do you need the road if you could break her spells? You gonna need my magic to outrun them heifers that's after you. Oh, they giving us a uh, Kill Bill T. She asks who he is and he says his name is, and we don't hear it. A little symbol flash over his mouth. 
So she like, all right, you can come with me. So I guess she sees the weird thing too. And she's like, I guess I'm supposed to figure this out. Is this her kid? Oh, they need a coven to access the road. So witches are always within a three mile radius of each other and can form a coven pretty quickly. So they just need one with a modicum of talent. So they stop in front of a psychic reading shop that's in a strip mall. Oh, and it's Patty Lupone. So Agatha goes in with this weird Southern accent and it's like, oh, could you help us find, get in communication with my husband, his pappy, and tell us where the gold he buried in the yard is? And Patty's like, okay, heifer. So as they sit down at the crystal ball, she says, how will you be paying? So Patty asks her, did your husband golf? And she says, he died on the 18th hole. She says the gold bars are in a bowling ball bag at the back of the closet. However, Patty says, hold on, but you've been under the influence of another. Someone you've hurt. Patty knows they took your agency for three years. It's not the first time the witch has betrayed you, but you survived. And that's why you're here. And I ain't interested in helping. Ha! Ah, Patty said witches like you are why people think we poison apples and steal babies. She says, well, I'm going to walk the road. Patty said, girl, you're going to steal my power if we even go on this road, if I go on this road with you. So she tell her, look, uh, he don't know about my ability, but I'm going to tell you, I can't steal my magic unless you use it on me. But then suddenly the piece of paper that Patty Lupone has changes and the lights start flickering on and off in the house and electricity pops. And she starts writing on the piece of paper like it's just taking over her. And I guess she was drawing the Three of Pentacles, so I guess they're a coven now. And Agatha get ready to leave, and she say, okay, meet us here at five. Plenty of parking. However, there's some other people on the list that they gotta go get. But on their way out, they see a crow, a card. Agatha look at it like she know who that heifer is. Oh, and across town, we have Sashir Zamita, who's next on the list, our late-in-life lesbian. Cha, Agatha walk in asking for some yoni balls. And Shashir recognized it right away. Oh, she's been kept majestless for the last century, too. All this has been legal trouble because some of her potions and potioned and burned people's skin up. I remember a scandal like that on YouTube many a moon ago. Many a moon. That's why we have the FDA. So the third witch is the daughter of a dead rocker. But while they eating lunch, Agatha see a rat and she run off, so I guess them witches is taking animal form finding her butt. So they find her at a hot topic and ask her, and then she's like, what? And But then she end up getting fired, and she's like, cha, I ain't going on the road with you, y'all dangerous. So in the car, she asks him where he from, and he starts talking, but she can't hear anything. It's so weird. That must be your kid. So everybody there, but we ain't got this fourth person yet. And Sashir like, Heffa, we need an earth witch. So she's like, okay, let me go get this Heffa. And it's a sweet old lady up the road, giving a Karen McCluskey tea from Desperate Housewives. So now we all go to the basement. She sent uh, the teen upstairs to close the windows. And then we decide, okay, we're going to sing this ballad. Sashir says, who's going high? Because I'm an alto. I'm going to get the low notes. Get a little drunk and you'll land in jail. Little Dorothy's born that for you. Cause she's hot, hot at Hannah, the vamp of Savannah G.A. Yeah. <laughs> this is a silly show. Why is Patty Lupone's character like uh, Tiffany Brown from Drag Race? She's always going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, Teletubbies, teleport us to Mars. No. I mean, it's funny, but it's just weird. However, upstairs, the teen finds the rabbit, but then hears some disembodied voices talking. As downstairs, Agatha rings the bell and we start singing the Ballad of the Witch's Road, sacred chant version. Oh my God, I heard the first thine of the season. It is really spooky season when you hear your first thine. If you know, you motherfucking know. If you be watching them old witchy movies, you motherfucking know when you hear that first thine. It is thine season from, I would say, mid-September all the way up to about Thanksgiving. Then, you know, it's Christmas movies up until, the, um, you know, New Year's. 
What are we watching in January? I don't look at football. If I want to see a man toot his ass, I'll just watch Pwn. However, we see upstairs the kid goes outside and there's this non-looking character on the street looking at him. Very scary. So I guess this is them heifers that was coming for him. So then we see the one heifer multiplies into many. The kid go back in the house and start trying to shut the blinds. You better get downstairs and get on the road. Get on the road. Get your eye of newt and yellow toad. And get on that road. But at the end of the song, the road don't open. Uh oh, but upstairs, the teen see the witches is coming down the chimney. So as they argue and they see the floor is glowing before them and there's a door. So, child, that teenager come running down the stairs. He's like, look, let's go right on down this road because what's ever up there, it ain't gonna be good. So, everybody runs down the road and we close the doors just in time. Just in case. You don't get the spell right. Gonna open the road for you one more time. Road for you one more time. Just in case you don't get that spell right. Open the road for you one more time. Road for you one more time. Oh, and then the door disappears. No way back. Like Mario. Or life. So we all take off our shoes and start walking down the road. Why be barefoot? And that was the shit!